right, welcome everybody. So today we're gonna to take a look at how to get started with CockroachDB and specifically CockroachDB Serverless, which is now in GA. So we'll start from this page, which is cockroachlabs.cloud. You can create an account from here if you don't have one already. I already have one. Uh, and as you can see, we've got a number of different single sign-on options. I'm gonna sign in with Google. And so here I now am on my clusters page in my CockroachDB cloud account. So I'm just gonna hit create cluster and I can choose between serverless or dedicated. In this case, I'm gonna choose serverless. I can choose whichever cloud provider I want. So I'll go with Google. Uh, from here, I can choose from whatever region is closest to me. I'm gonna stick with South Carolina in this case. I can set a spend limit. Uh, if I want the cluster to remain free, then I can just keep the spend limit at zero. Or if I needed more performance than that, I could obviously change this, but I'll keep that at zero for now. And I could change the cluster name, but uh, I'm gonna just keep the default one here. So we'll hit create your free cluster. And boom, we can already see in the background the cluster has been created. Um, so now this is gonna pop up and prompt us to create a SQL user. I'm just gonna do that and it has now generated a password. So obviously I want to save this password in a secure location. For the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to save it over here, which is not a secure location, but uh, it, is, it is what it is. Now that I've saved the SQL user password, I'm gonna hit next. And this brings us to the connection screen, which is gonna give us all the information that we need to connect to the database in a wide variety of different ways. Uh, the first thing to do is if you don't already have the CA cert downloaded, you need to download that onto your machine. I do already have this downloaded, but uh, just for the sake of demonstrating this, I'm gonna just copy that and then we'll pop over here into terminal and we will get that downloaded. All right, great, we are all good there. Now looking back over here, we can see that the default option here is just the general Postgres connection string. And if you already know what you're doing, that's all you need. Grab this, plug it into your application, you are good to go. But if it's helpful, we actually have a number of different options at this point. So you can look at specifically what the parameters are. If you want to use the CockroachDB client and connect that way, we've got the instructions for doing that. And we also have options like Python, and I can even specify what am I using to connect to the database, uh, PsychoPG2, SQL Alchemy, Django, um, and we've got all of the code that you would need there. But I'm gonna just jump back to the general connection string and we're gonna use this to connect to a Python app using PsychoPG2 ourselves. So here is our Python app such as it is. And I wanna stress that this is very much not a production application, obviously. Um, this is just, I, I tried to make this as simple as possible so it, we can really demonstrate exactly what's happening. Obviously we're doing some things here that you would not want to do uh, with your actual production application, but uh, just for the purposes of demonstrating exactly how this works, I wanna have everything on one screen. So the first thing that we're gonna do that you should never actually do uh, is paste the database URL in there so that I have this as a variable. Now normally you should use an environment variable to do this so that this isn't sitting in your code. Again, I'm just doing this in this example so that we can see everything on one screen at the same time and know exactly what's happening. Uh, and this is blurred out, but this is just that connection string that I copied from the previous page. Blurred because it includes my password. So uh, as we can see, this application such as it is, is really very simple. We just have a single function, which is create table. And so what we're gonna do is connect using PsychoPG2, which uh, enables connecting to Postgres databases. And we're just going to feed it that database URL to connect to. Um, so we've got our connection being created here. So here is where our SQL query is actually happening. Now that we've connected to the database, we are going to run a SQL query. In this case, this create table query. Uh, and technically I should probably put a semicolon at the end of that, although it will work either way. So we've got this variable, which is defining the query that we want to run. And obviously you could do the same thing with any kind of query here. And then we are going to execute that query here. Uh, and then we're committing it and we will either print that a table has been created successfully if that is the case, or if there is some kind of exception, then we'll print the error. And then uh, all we're doing is calling the function. So really, really, really simple. But hopefully this makes it clear and demonstrates exactly how this works. So let's see if it does work. So we're gonna hop over here and let's run it. 
table created successfully in CockroachDB. So uh, this has worked. We have now spun up a free CockroachDB serverless cluster and we've connected it to our app and we've run a query against it. Now we can actually jump over here. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna hop out of this and just to be sure that that actually worked, we can hop over here and we can look into the databases that are on our cluster. We'll now see that there's a default DB. Uh, and if we jump into that, we'll see that there is one table there called bikes. It's got three columns and one index. Uh, and we can even jump in even further and we can see exactly here's the query that we just ran, how it was interpreted. Uh, and we can see that indeed we have exactly what we expected. So this has all worked. And we now have a Python application that is connected to a free CockroachDB serverless database.